Today, we are going to work with collage and specifically my favorite type of collage, photo montage. Uh, that way you're using pre-existing images and you don't have to start from scratch. The materials we're going to use today are a nice neutral PVA glue. You can use glue sticks, you can use Elmer's glue, any glue that you like, although I recommend you pick a glue that dries clear. So if a little glue squirts out, it's no big deal. Scissors are very helpful. I prefer to use an X-Acto knife, but that may not be your preference. Um, if you use an X-Acto knife and you're not quite sure about your ability to be, to be safe, you may want to choose to wear a garden glove on your opposite hand. If you're a child or you're just a accident prone adult, this really helps you feel comfortable that if the knife slips or skips, that your free hand will be protected. It would be very challenging indeed to hurt the hand you're actually holding the knife with. So that's a really great safety tip. And what I would do also is to think about getting a thick piece of cardboard or some scrap paper um, in a nice thick stack to put underneath, or you can get a very inexpensive cutting mat that allows you to cut things without damaging the surface underneath. One of my favorite things to do is take something that already has an image on it and alter it. So I have this existing advertisement, and what I wanted to do is keep this central image, but change it quite a lot. So what I did was I actually sliced a little bit around the edge. I put it in just like I might slip something into an envelope. So collage doesn't have to simply be gluing things on. It could also be elements of paper weaving as well. When I start a collage, I like to think about all my pieces in terms of size. And the rule of thumb that I give myself, which you can certainly break sometimes, is to start with your biggest shapes first. And what I've done here is I've started with an advertisement and I've added some strips of colors that I found in other parts of a magazine and this is actually some wrapping paper. And when I put my pieces down, let me add a couple more so you can see this technique, I like to add dots of glue or a thin line of glue around the perimeter or the edge of the piece. So I'm going to go with a very thin line of glue right near the edge so that all the pieces of this piece of paper are going to be nice and flat, and sometimes I'll do a little zigzag to fill in the center pieces. A little goes a long way with glue, so I find that it's really helpful not to overdo it. And many times I actually won't glue things down right away unless it's my very large pieces, because I really like to see what I can accomplish um, by rearranging pieces. Fun things to do are actually cutting people up for magazines and seeing what you can create by remixing them. So if this little lady has a lock as her head and a security badge as her lower body, that could be really fun. Um, one thing that I noticed in some of the things that I cut out was um, these little pieces in the wood could make a really cool set of eyes, as could these eye spots on this moth. And I also like to take in elements from the same image and intersperse them throughout. So these eyes went with this face. I found it from an art book. Um, all these art students put examples of their work up. And I might want to shift this here make it part of the wood, and I think I like how that looks. If I use this with the moth, then I can move it anywhere, and I might shift it down. Yeah, I think I like that. I'm not going to glue anything down just yet because I really wanna play around and have options. When I start to glue things down right away, often I can get stuck, and that can frustrate me. So I'm going to start to keep finding some large pieces. I found this really neat bowl, and I like how it's fairly neutral in color. I'm not going to worry if it goes off the edge. I can always trim that later. And whenever I have really bright colors, I like to think about how I can balance it. So if I have bright yellow and actually a little red here, I wanna think about how I can balance that and maybe put some yellow someplace else. A triangular composition is really effective to help our eye know where to move. So perhaps I would add 
this young lady with a durian body dancing around right here. You can tell that I cut really carefully around because there's not a lot of excess image. I tried to cut right on the edge and that's what this X-Acto knife will do for you. It's really helpful to be precise and when you are precise and you cut right carefully around the image, they're able to blend together and seem like they're part of the same piece of artwork. Often when there's edges that show up, it really looks like maybe you've pasted one thing on and it doesn't quite blend together as easily to your eye. Now that we have all of our middle size pieces, you could choose to go in and make very small pieces. Um, I might decide to start to cut this blue triangle up into lots of smaller triangles. But this is going to take some time. The most important thing when you work in collage is that you play around, test it, move it around, see how it looks to you, and think about some triangles of similar color. So for instance, I have my yellows here and perhaps I will pop my durian back because I do need it for some variety. I'm gonna slide it here. And then I also have some reds here that are similar. I have some areas of serious detail and some areas that give your eye a break. And that's a really helpful thing to consider when you're making a collage. Try some collage and have fun with it. Think of it more like a paper puzzle that you'll glue down a little bit later. Bye.